My name's Anita Chase Barges. I'm the technical specialist for the core laboratories at the University of Maryland specializing in chemistry. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about automating vitros for high volume performance. So we are the University of Maryland Medical Center, part of the University of Maryland Medical Systems. And we were looking at bringing in new laboratory equipment and automating our lab. Our goal was to totally automate our laboratory, so we looked at a number of different vendors to see what solutions they could provide for us. And then we'll talk about how we chose our current vendor, Ortho. And then at the end, we'll show some slides showing how we improved our turnaround times and got the efficiencies that we wanted to with the new vendor. University of Maryland Medical Center is the flagship hospital of the University of Maryland Medical System. It's a 750 bed hospital specializing in trauma, transplant, cardiac, and critical care. We are one of the largest hospitals in the state performing critical care. We are known for our shock trauma center, which is one of the best in the world. We also have a very large and growing cancer center. So when we started, we had three laboratories. We had a shock trauma laboratory, which took care of shock trauma. We had a NICU laboratory, which was just focused on the NICU lab. And then we had a core laboratory, which took care of everything else that had to be done. So our challenges when we were looking at new laboratories, our shock trauma lab had no automation. So it had no automation, everything was still being done manually and put in there. We had very mature analyzers that needed to be replaced. The NICU lab was cramped. It was very small. We had been cited by CAP because of this and a very limited menu. Our core laboratory had partial automation. We were just automated in the chemistry area and it wasn't a complete automation. We didn't have centrifuges. We didn't have cappers, recappers, storage, etc. We also had a lot of turnaround time challenges. Other than shock trauma and NICU, everything was coming into the core laboratory and we weren't able to service our clients accordingly. So as our capacity was growing, we had greater turnaround time needs, as we talked about in the previous slide, everything was dumping into the core lab and we couldn't meet any of our clients' needs. We couldn't meet our cancer center needs, we couldn't meet our emergency room needs, we couldn't meet our ICU needs. We needed to grow our test menu. We had a lot of tests we sent out that we wanted to be able to bring in-house. We were also increasing our test volume. In addition to the growth in our cancer center and our transplant service, trauma was growing. We were also now part of a system that wanted to send laboratory work to us that they were previously outsourcing to reference laboratories. So here's what we needed. Our demands to our vendors, not really demands, requests. Um, we needed to do more with our current level of staffing. Um, med techs are hard to find these days. It's an aging population. We weren't necessarily looking to decrease the amount of people in the core lab, but we wanted to bring in more testing. We wanted to improve our efficiencies. We were not meeting our turnaround times. We wanted to be able to improve efficiency by doing um, less maintenance, less calibrations, um, having everything automated so that it moved through quickly and flowed very well. Space. We had space limitations, so we needed to be able to build in the space we had. The current core lab, we had no money for construction costs, so we could not tear down walls, so everything had to be built within the current configuration. Our current system was a water-based system. We had a wet chemistry analyzer. So water systems have to be in certain areas. So we needed to be able to have chemistry analyzers that we could put where we wanted to, not based on where the water system was. Wet chemistries require a lot of calibration. They have additional maintenance. We were having issues with probe and water system contamination. There were often downtimes for maintenance procedures or even just routine troubleshooting because we only had the single core lab. So our goals were to increase efficiency and that was to do more with less. We wanted to grow our testing capacity, bring more tests in-house that we were currently sending out and we wanted to have flexibility. If one analyzer went down, we wanted to have another one to back it up. We wanted to have the flexibility to build within our contained space and also to build within some new space. So the solution was to have two labs servicing two different sets of clients. So the proposal was to have two laboratories, one in the South Core and one in the North Core. 
The South Core Laboratory was going to go into brand new space. We had just recently been approved to build a brand new trauma tower. This would provide us with the space to put in a new core laboratory, which we would call the South Core Laboratory. This is our totally automated laboratory. Chemistry, hematology, and coag. That's what we wanted to be able to do, is to have all those analyzers on a single automation line, okay? This laboratory would focus on trauma, critical care, the ED, and everybody else in that particular area of the hospital. Um, it is in the basement, it is right underneath the trauma center, it is right under the ED, so it's close by. So the focus here is to prove our turnaround time and capacity. We want to be able to use this laboratory to do everything if need be. The North Core Laboratory is built in the current space of the original Core Laboratory. In this space, because of space constraints, we could only fully automate chemistry. However, we would be fully able to automate centrifugation for chemistry and coag and to sort out hematology. This laboratory focuses on the cancer center and the inpatients on that side of the hospital. That particular side of the hospital is mainly what we would call routine inpatients. They're not the critically ill ones. They're more the long-term patients. So this is the function of the North Core Laboratory. The other thing with having two laboratories like this is that we can back each other up. So for example, if we need to do some kind of maintenance that may take down the automation system in one of the laboratories, we can then send everything to the other laboratory. When we first went live with this configuration, the South Core Laboratory did all the work for the hospital. Our North Core Laboratory had not been reconfigured yet. So for about nine months, our South Core Laboratory did 100% of the testing in the hospital and was able to fulfill those functions. We selected OrthoVitrus Analyzers and Engine Laboratory Automation because they were the only company that could fully meet our needs. They were the only ones that could put chemistry analyzers, the Sysmec HST line, and the Stago coagulation analyzers on one automation line. And that's what we really wanted. We wanted one automation line. This is our North Core laboratory in its current configuration. This was a space we had no money to break down any walls. So we set our analyzers into a square. They're attached to the back of the engine automation track. The front part on the other side of the analyzers is where all the samples go in for processing. And there are two centrifuges attached to here. And then also at the very bottom of that slide, that is the exit module where the hematology samples are sorted into their Sysmax racks. What's not present in this picture is a picture of the HST line where the samples for the Sysmax would be put on. But as you can see, we have that square and that small confined space. This is our South Core Laboratory in its current configuration. We had a lot more open spaces here. So we have our analyzers in a line. We have the 25600s, 24600s on the inside part of the automation. The front piece to the left is where the samples are put in by the accessioning crew. Those samples are then sorted and sent to the three centrifuges, which you can actually see on the outside of the automation line. And on the inside is you'll see your two Stago connections opposite the centrifuges, and then you can see the attachment of the HST line for the Sysmax analyzers. So as you can see with this open space configuration, everything's loaded in the front, and then it goes to either the chemistry analyzers, the hematology analyzers, or the coag analyzers for processing. One of the things that we do here is we load everything onto the track. We have no special processing except for a few red bag stats, which come from our trauma unit, come from our critical care resuscitation unit, and come from our lung resuscitation unit. These samples are pre-spun in a stat centrifuge before they're loaded onto the track. That is the only special handling that we do for any samples. All samples, whether they're from the ED, whether they're from the floor, whether they're from the ICUs, go onto the track in the same way. Another slide showing our open automation. This is where you can see our Stago connections to the right on the bottom of that slide. And then you see where the HST line is attached to the track the engine automation. We have incorporated Data Innovation's middleware for auto validation. 
We ought to validate about 65% of our results through the middleware. We do see a lot of stranger results because we do have such a high critical care population. We're able to address volume very well because with the automation, it doesn't matter whether you get 4,000 samples or 10,000 samples. The automation system effectively handles any increases in volume no matter what day it is. So I'm going to show some slides showing some of our turnaround time outcomes. So this, what I did is I asked one of our lab IT people, I said, pull me a chart of any day. I don't care what day it is, just to show what our turnaround times are like. So this is a day in our North Lab with our Comprehensive Cancer Center. And our goals are is to have a CMP out in 45 minutes and a CBC out in 20 minutes. And what you can see is we've accomplished that today. And what's really good is you get this straight line across. It's consistent. You don't have a bunch of them out in 20 minutes and a bunch of them out in 90 minutes, so they average 45 minutes. Everything is coming across quickly and effectively, so we have a straight line meeting all of our goals here throughout the day. The other thing that you'll also notice here is you don't have to worry about who you staff up in a laboratory. Whether you have the most effective tech or the least effective tech, that's not going to matter. Automation takes that piece out of the equation because everything's going on there. It's being loaded the same way. It's being load balanced so not one analyzer is overloaded. And also it's sending the test to all the correct analyzers without having to worry which one it has to go to. Our next slide is showing an ED snapshot. Again, just a random day. Our goal is to have all results within 60 minutes or less, and that's all of them here. And as you can see, again, we have that straight line. Most of them are under 40 minutes. And again, the other thing to notice is that you're not seeing changes like, well, day shift is always consistently under, and evening shift isn't, and night shift isn't. Everything is the same. You get that nice straight line making your goals. You're always going to have a few outliers, something that had to have a dilution or something. Um, maybe it was an add-on or had another issue. This is our trauma snapshot. And our trauma, we have a few different goals. We want our CMPs and troponins under an hour, our CBC within 45 minutes, and our PT within 30 minutes. And again, making or below those turnaround time goals. And again, a very consistent line across here. This is a slide showing our overall performance. This first slide on the left is showing how we did in 2011. Well, we were partially automated. And then the next slide is the first six months of this year. And again, you'll see that we're now almost always above that 85% line. Most of the time, we're in that 90% line or above. The other thing to notice is a lot less variation. Again, a straight line. You see that variation up and down. But on the graph on the right, you're not seeing that variation. So a summary of our results, using automation, in particular ortho engine automation, greatly increased our laboratory efficiencies. We're able to do more with less staff in that we've been able to expand some of our special chemistry areas and increase testing in those areas without bringing in additional staff. We have grown our testing capacity so we can handle the influx of patients into our cancer center, which is greatly expanded. We can also handle increased patients through our trauma unit, through our ED, and we're now able to take samples from our sister hospitals as they outsource to us rather than to reference laboratories. We have improved laboratory flexibility. We were able to use our current space to put the automation system in without having to take down any walls. We had the flexibility to build a big automated laboratory in our South Lab. We also have flexibility in that if we have an issue in one laboratory, say we need to take down a track or an instrument for maintenance, for troubleshooting, for anything like that, we now have another laboratory where we can send those samples to and get the same results because they're all flowing in through the same system. It is pervasive rumor that you can't use dry chemistry for high volume performance. And we beg to differ because we're doing it. We do six million tests a year. We're processing them using dry chemistry and we meet and exceed our turnaround time goals on a daily basis. Thank you.